Hello glorious beauties, I am Dragonflow aka Frank and this is my beautiful dog Ozzy, my co-host. So a question was asked and I want to answer all the questions as much as possible while this channel is still small. So why is it that women who are making more money than ever before are m and more educated than ever before uh, are more depressed and unhappy and more single than ever before? Well, I will try and answer that question as well as possible but I only have 5 to 15 minutes to do so, so we might have to continue it in another video at some point. So essentially we are in a synthetic environment, okay? The woman's nature is to find a provisionary man so that she could have her kids and take care of her kids. Now in modern society, maybe women don't want kids, but they've still retained this idea that a man should be able to provision for her and take care of her. Obviously, subconsciously, with the intention that she will have kids at some point. Uh, now, what's happening in our society is because of this thing called hypergamy, and everyone's heard of hyper hypergamy. Everyone's uh, everyone knows what it is. But if you don't know why hy what hypergamy is, I'll try and explain it to you. So, women date across and up dominance hierarchies, which is to say they mate uh, men that make as much money as them or slightly above. Now, I have seen women date slightly down in financial dominance hierarchies, but not too much down, which is to say like a man who earns 250000 a year will date a waitress that earns 30000 a year. A woman who is a psychologist and makes, let's say, 120000 a year, 150000 a year might date a guy who earns eighty five or a hundred thousand a year, but she will definitely not date or probably very strongly not date somebody that earns forty to fifty thousand a year. So even if a woman dates slightly down in financial hierarchies, it's not gonna be by much. Because deep down, even the most uh financially simplified woman is looking for someone to provision for her and her kids at some point just in case she's at a weak state and can't work so there's that because we've created this society where women are more and more educated and getting paid more and more and good for them i'm not here to judge that you go girl get as much money as you can and dominate the world as well as you can however what happens is as they are improving themselves they are also, and they have their gaze upwards, they're alienating all the men that are downwards and that they don't feel are meeting up to their standards. Now, this is sort of a good thing because it, it's a warning sign and a nudge to men to like improve themselves and do better. But it's sort of a bad sign because when, as you're moving further and further up and the people that you're looking to date are higher than you, Obviously, if you're higher than most of the men who you deem unfinancially or physically unworthy, what's going to happen is if the whole gender moves their way to the top, they're going to exclude a whole bunch of men that would be eligible to date but are not considered at their grandeur or their status which kind of alienates a whole bunch of men for the dating market and it alienates women from being with decent men because subconsciously they cannot accept that they are earning and doing better financially than these men. Now, I think at some point something is going to happen to balance this out. And what I think is going to happen is not necessarily a good thing. So I will talk about it in future videos. There is usually some kind of collapse which makes men useful again and women uh, need men again. Unfortunately, in this generation, the dating system is scrapped for most people because women financially don't need men and men aren't doing as well financially as women. This is a sad reality of the world we live in. And it's not because women are bad or because men are bad. It's just the way we are psychologically hardwired. So if a man cannot guide a woman into a better life and she could do it all by herself, well, there's some part of her uh, psyche that will not get turned on by you. Like I said before, it is very possible that you meet a girl that's earning quite a bit of money more than you, but you still have to be doing well. And in that regard, you have to contribute other things to her. 
So what you have to understand is every relationship needs a balance. If the girl you're with is so, so good looking and you're mega good looking, and she earns more money than you and you earn less, that keeps it balanced. You're better looking than she is, she earns more money than you. If you're very handy around the house, but she earns more money than you, and you work, but you also take care of the kids, you spend a lot of time with the kids, you wash dishes, you cook, she might interpret these as female roles, and they say, oh my God, she's not gonna be attracted to that. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, you're kind of flipping the traditional side of things, but you're also balancing out the relationship. You're doing things she can't. She's doing things you can't. If you could have, offer a balance in a relationship, then there might still be a way to work it out. But you got to keep it balanced. I had this one friend. He's like, I don't understand why I have to work so hard. I'm not getting the traditional woman anymore. It's like, well, here's the thing. You also have to under be understanding that she works too. So no woman wants to work 40, 50 hours a week and then come home and babysit you and cook your food and wash your dishes. So you, you have to balance things out around the house. As her role has changed, so will your role. In terms of the economic side, it's a sad state of affair. As long as women continue to earn much more than men, there is a part of their psyche that will not allow themselves to be attracted to men that earn a lot less than them. It is the nature of the game. You should hate the game and not the player. So that's pretty much what it's at. They are not to be blamed the same way we are not to be blamed as men for loving, beautiful, young, attractive women with an hourglass figure. We are all hardwired a certain way to have certain preferences. Men love beautiful young women and women love provisionary, wealthy, successful, uh, high status men. It is the nature of the game. You have to work really, really hard as a man to earn your status and earn your place in the world. And women have to earn, work very hard to maintain their beauty, stay sexy and stay desirable. Both men and women have their challenges. As Dave Chappelle said, it's a joke, but it's true. Men and women have different challenges. Men have, men, their challenge is sex. We're going to look at beautiful women and get distracted and we're going to give her a halo of how incredibly amazing she is and beautiful. She's so perfect. And really, it's just your brain distracting you because you want to pass down your gene to her and you want to have sex with her. Women will look at a very resourceful guy, very wealthy guy, and her mind will start playing tricks on her. Oh, he's so wonderful. He's so great. He's so, and he's not. Or maybe he is, but he's just a guy who like got a lot of money. And he may or may not be great, but he's not a great person based on the fact that he got rich. So we have to, div we have to kind of think about these things very objectively. We have to look at these challenges very objectively. You have to rationalize and calm down your mind when you see a beautiful woman and you're horny. And a woman has to calm down her mind and rationalize when she sees a guy who is wealthy and thinks he's going to give her the world. It is just the nature of the game. So in answering this question as well, best as I could, why are women more depressed and more single than ever before? Well, because the game that women are playing is a bit skewed in that they're winning in the career aspect, but that's the man role, that's the man's role to be winning in that aspect. And society has kind of shifted that for them and good for them. However, as women do much better in terms of careers, this will alienate men more and more. And unfortunately, I don't have an answer for this, except for we have to be conscious of our animalistic desires, men have to be conscious of not necessarily throwing our love and our attention on a girl just simply because she looks good. And women have to stop giving their desire over the men who they think are better suited simply because they have more money and they, create, they can create a more opulent lifestyle. We have to balance it out where the person that we're with is attractive and we care about them enough to want to procreate with them, but also that we don't get blinded by all these superficial and artificial things presented by the media as to how we should live and who we should be sleeping with. 
we are creating, unfortunately, a society of, or a subsect of the society which is unfuckable and undesirable because they're not attractive enough and they're not rich enough. And this is sad. Men and women need to find a more kind of common ground again where we could start loving each other again, taking care of each other again. And I'm going to be the first to say that men and women have disenfranchised each other throughout uh, history. But men and women have also worked side by side with each other across history. Right now, we're in the disenfranch disenfranch disenfranchisement phase of men are mad at women because we're not getting the sex that we want and the attention that we want. And women are mad at men because we're not as resourceful as we should be and we're not giving our resources as much as we should and we're being a bit more stingy. But we have to find a way to work more serendipitously and parallel with each other. We need to make peace with the sexes. I think right now it's the growing pains of modernity. We have to go through these pains together and hopefully we will come out the other hand holding hands with each other again. Sorry if that sounds cheesy, but I think in that regard we all want a little bit of the blue pill sometimes where you could look at somebody from the opposite sex and actually just melt into them. And I don't think there's anything wrong with a little bit of blue pill in that regard. But until then, fight a good fight and go through the growing pains with respect for yourself and dignity for yourself and do what you need to do to be the best man or woman possible. I don't know what your journey holds for you, but I just ask that you look at the opposite sex rationally and objectively when vetting them for a relationship.